Unsyndicated presents. Off the air with Sean the Legion. What is up? Glad you could join us. It is a Tuesday night, just a couple days away from the draft. I know so many of you are watching the Stanley Cup playoffs right now. I should be. I have no other way to say that, but I'm happy to be here chatting with you. We're going to talk some draft. Uh, if anything big happens in the games, by all, mean, all means, let us know. We would love, love to hear from it. Because I've said this before, Blake, I don't know if you're the same way. So. All the years that I had to do radio, I hated doing radio while games were. Mm -hmm. I hated it with a passion because there are human beings, and, and, and I am not one of them. There are human beings that, that can easily multitask. Like they can sit there and talk about doing the job. And as we found out last night, as we had our little NHL watch party, sometimes, and I went back and watched today, sometimes I just kind of go like this. But that's a watch party. and get, But I get lost in the game, right? And, and, and so I was like that when I was on the radio. So when I was hosting a couple different um, afternoon shows um, and the Tigers were on, the Tigers were playing an afternoon game. I hated it with a passion. And and like, I, I, you know me, I'm not really a demanding person. Okay. Mm -hmm. I literally demanded that they turn off the televisions at the station. Really? You were I that had, guy. Dude, I, I, I had to, I had to police myself. I, I, I really did. I had to, I had to police myself. I was so terrified that I would just, because at least you can see I'm an idiot when you're watching this, right? Yeah, that's true. But on the radio, you don't get that. You you know what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. you don't get that. So it's a situation where I just was like, guys, I, I hate to be that guy, but I, I got to turn off the television. And and Blake, trust me, the same thing is right. I would love to have my TV on is, is, is like right there. My TV... See where I'm pointing here. Oh, I know. Okay. I know right where it is. Yeah. Okay. I could I could legitimately be watching the game right now. Like yeah. no problem. I could be watching either one of the games on TV right now, but I would be lost in about five seconds. I would be lost in about five seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, Kristen asks, is that a stuff go behind Blake? Yes, it is. Kristen doesn't watch the shows very often. Hmm. Weird. Because that's been talked mm. about. Uh, isn't that, isn't that cool. very telling? Very telling. He used to be named Brady. Yes. Now he's named Mahomes. You don't really believe that, though, do you? You don't, you don't uh, really. I, he's on the fast track. I do believe that. Give him some time. Give him some time. Do you know yeah. what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the 2005, 2006, 2007. Tiger wasn't the GOAT yet, but surely he was going to pass Jack, right? The fact that we've avoided, oh, golf, we've avoided golf talk for all this time, and this is the time you're bringing up a golf thing. Didn't we talk? We talked about the Masters a couple weeks ago. I did, didn't I? Shep and I, I did. Yeah, you guys did. I, uh, yeah, you and I, Blake, I Blake opts out of those conversations. Speaking of golf, how about that segue? Uh, we had a great time yesterday down at PAL. Um, our friends with Visit Detroit and, of course, the Detroit Sports Commission had a, I guess you could say, an official um, NFL draft kickoff party. Mayor Duggan threw the pass that, you know, it's, it's the ceremonial start of draft week. And it was so cool because they paid homage to a lot of the people that helped put this together. And most importantly, and this is the coolest thing about this city. I swear the city gives back more than anybody. It's, it's, it's incredible. I mean, time and time and time and time again, 
this city finds a way to to give back. And so what they did is they were bringing up some of the places that they helped out and some of the some of the things that they did for the community. And the reason why I said it, um, you know, this comes back to golf. I saw our old buddy Jason Langwell out there uh, does such a fantastic job with the Rocket Mortgage Classic, executive director of the Rocket Mortgage Mortgage Classic. It was great uh, to see him out there. Uh, Lord knows they do so many wonderful, wonderful things for the community. I mean, the Bridging uh, the Gap um, initiative has been awesome, you know, making sure that um, people in the city of Detroit have internet access. Our old buddy, Terry Radigan, uh, was uh, there as well. It was nice to catch up with Terry. Terry's doing such a great job with the Sports Commission. I mean, so many moving parts and and the things that these guys are doing. and, And most importantly, they're things that we know and there are things that we don't know yet. So it was really cool to run into them. And, you know, I told them both we can help out in any way in the in the uh, future. We would love to do it. But, um, Blake, I think it bears repeating. Yeah, these events are great. Yeah, there's so many fantastic things to come out of them. But at the end of the day, it's about giving back. And, and, and that's what uh, that's what so many of these enterprises do. And that is so cool. I need to bring something up, though. And we've been talking about this. Gosh, Blake, when did we start talking about this? I, I, the first week of February, maybe. And I have said this line over and over and over. I don't think people understand what is coming to Detroit. And I sit here less than 48 hours away from the event. And I still contend to this moment, the average person doesn't understand what is coming to Detroit. And, and you know, we've been consistent. Know before you go, make sure you get the NFL one pass. But our buddy Kurt, um, that uh, it does so many great things behind the scenes, wanted everybody to know. And I'm going to read this verbatim, if you don't mind, Kurt. Have a plan. Consider the mass transit options. Arrive early. Be flexible. Dress for comfort. If the main Campus Martius fan viewing area is too crowded, go to the draft day in the D fan viewing and entertainment areas at Grand Circus Park, Beacon Park, and also the fan areas in Corktown and Greektown. Don't forget the draft is three days. Everybody forgets about that. Blake, remember I had a temper tantrum last week? I, I'm telling you, we're going to never have temper tantrums. What are you talking about? You're the, very. I, I get frustrated with the people that like <laughs> the draft is done. I can't believe Brad Holmes didn't get a cornerback. There's Holmes. Chill. Just a little. Chill. The draft is three days. Go to all three days or pick the day that works best for you. So can't thank our friends from the Detroit Sports Commission enough. And, you know, we're, we're helping them spread the message. We want this to be the best event ever for the city of Detroit. Seriously. And yes. uh, these guys are ready. They've been planning it for a long, long time. I don't think we're ready. I don't think we have a flipping clue what Brad Holmes is going to do, which is exactly the way that Brad Holmes wants it, which is exactly the way I want it. I want other people to be guessing. I want people sitting there on the clock going, okay, you know, I'd really like to move up and and, and take a look at this guy. What are the Lions thinking? You know what I mean? Yes, 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 and yes. Thank you very much. Jason said Panthers up to nothing. Appreciate that. Thanks for the updates. But Blake, that's that to me, I want that guy as my general manager where everybody is guessing. That's why, you know, I always say this about Steve Eiserman. When somebody tells you they know what Steve Eiserman is doing, the first thing that I say is that person is talking out of their behind. Yeah, You don't know what Steve Eiserman's doing. He keeps everything so close to the vest. Now, what we can do, and I'm always partial to point that out for myself, what we can do is sit back and say, well, here's his tendency. Here's what he's done in the past, et cetera, et cetera. But anybody that says they know what Steve Eiserman's going to do is, is, is flat out lying. And the same, I think, might be said for Brad Holmes and and – I said this once, I've said it a thousand times. If you don't trust Brad Holmes yet, it's not his fault. It isn't his fault. And that's going to be the best thing about it. Are you still trying to make that mock draft work? 
I'm yeah, so I I'm am working on it. Mock draft doesn't work. Gosh, I would be so upset. I'm, I'm I got I have a second computer now. Don't That's where we're at. I have two laptops going. Don't do it. I'm I, no, no, no. no uh, I I believe it's Jason who has been in the chat for two weeks straight yelling at us. I love Jason. and I am man. I'm a man of the people. And I provide our listeners and viewers, mostly viewers, because this is not going to be great audio, but I provide our viewers with what they want. That's what I do. Our buddy, Mike Faye from Mike Faye Golf out there. So we were just talking about Rocket Mortgage Classic. I've been out there with Mike the last three years. Hopefully, Mike, we can do it one way or another this year, but uh, nice to run into Jason Langwell and getting ready for that. That is one of the crown jewels. Here's the coolest thing about this, Blake, is you try to figure out your mock draft that I pray you never figure out because I, I just I don't want to. Gosh, damn you. Gosh, damn you. Um, Here's one of the biggest things, though, for me personally. Um, There are so many cool events in this area that that are happening in the spring, whether it be. The Rocket Mortgage Classic going, you know, obviously a little later. Uh, the Grand Prix. Obviously, we have the draft here. It is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And you, you know what? You add one more crown jewel. Uh, if you are a sports fan, if you're somebody that likes to get out and about in the community, there are so many options for you. And, and again, the key and the beauty of this is how much these entities give back, whether it be Penske, whether it be Rocket Mortgage, whether it be, you know, obviously what Detroit Sports Commission and Visit Detroit are doing. It's it's just such a cool time to be here. It really is. Did you really figure out the mock draft? Did you really figure out the mock draft? I don't think Blake can hear me right now. All right, some technical difficulties, but that's all right. That's how it goes. So this is a situation right now where um, there is so much going on. And obviously the Stanley Cup playoffs, uh, you guys can keep me apprised because as I said, I I would love to be watching right now. I really would love to be watching right now. But at the end of the day, I can't because I would just be a zombie. Okay. Uh, Just a reminder, again, get the NFL one pass. If you're planning to go downtown if you're planning to go downtown and take in the festivities make sure you get the nfl one pass no before you go that is that is the the coolest thing uh that i can suggest to you right now is no before you go get the nfl one pass make sure that you are prepared and uh it is one of those things right now where i mean i have no other way to say it um it's going to be crazy down there. As somebody who has seen a draft up close and personal, you think you know, but you don't know. It would be the way that I say it. All right, we're, we are going to try to delve into a mock draft in just a second. But uh, I want to tell you very quickly about our friends from Legacy, Todd, if I may. And you know what? I have a great story for you. Yep, true story as well. Uh, somebody reached out to legacy and and is already reaping the benefits of what we talked about listen i have no other way to say this guys Uh, we all know times are tough right now right so why don't you save yourself a little money and did you know that thousands of metro detroiters have already called legacy partners to get help with their home and auto insurance. Our friends at Legacy Partners are one of Southeast Michigan's top independent insurance agents. They provide a full-service, one-stop solution for all of your insurance needs, personal, business, large, or small. And as I said, one of our valued viewers and listeners put them to the test and said, yep, you weren't lying. Come on, I'm not going to steer you wrong. What are you waiting for? Get your quote now. Legacy has helped our listeners by fixing mistakes other agents have made, asking the right questions to get the right coverage put in place to properly protect you and, oh yeah, help save you some money at the same time. Chances are, if you haven't checked your policies in the last year, you're probably paying too much and you could be underinsured. Enter 
Legacy Partners. Give them a chance to help with your home, your cars, life insurance, Medicare enrollment, or your business insurance needs. Call them today, 586-209-4106. That's 586-209-4106. Or visit LegacyPartnersINS.com to get started with your new quotes. Thank you. I say it all the time. Support those who support us. Put them to the test. Get your quote. You're going to find out the same thing that one of our valued listeners and viewers already found out. Uh, once again, Sean Belegian with you. I know Blake is going to be uh, joining us shortly here. So it's interesting, all right, because if you guys have followed me in the past, I have done draft shows everywhere. I've, I've done them on television. I did a seven-hour draft show back in the day uh, with Stoney. I've done draft podcasts for the Lions Radio Network. I've done draft shows with the Lions Radio Network where it was, you know, me and Lomas and Steve Courtney and Dan Miller or Brandy, whatever the case may be. And this is such a different year right now because we're used to the Lions, maybe top 10, maybe mid round, right? I mean, how many times have we seen the Lions picking in that area? Uh, Nick said Rangers caps 2-2. Two, two. Wow. it's a lot of goals for that series. I, I, I'm a like the under guy. I'm not really a big betting guy, but I'm a like the under guy, especially in the Rangers caps. So maybe that's why I'm not a big betting guy anymore. Um, but this is a situation where it's hard to gauge this draft. I've, I've had a problem this whole draft season. And Nick said, it's weird waiting for the Lions to draft late. I, and that's why I've had a problem with mock drafts this year. Not that there's any certainty to begin with with the mock, dra mock drafts, because there isn't. There, there, there isn't. And we have fun with it. And Blake's going to have his silly little ha-ha giggle fun in just a moment with it. But the uncertainty that is already there when the Lions are picking earlier you multiply it a hundred times now that the Lions are picking where they're picking. And I'm going to say it again. Would my jaw drop if Brad Holmes catapulted down from that position? Absolutely not. My jaw wouldn't drop in any way, shape, or form. And this is where I say again, if that man hasn't earned your trust yet, that's on you, man. That is 100% on you. And I'm cool with what he does. And I, Blake, as sure as we're sitting here, you and I will do a show maybe Friday, okay? Maybe Friday we'll do a show. And you know as well as I do, people will wham, wham. And why didn't the Lions do this? Why didn't the Lions do that? I can't believe he moved out of the first round. I can't believe you're questioning the man right now. I, I'm not even being funny. I can't believe you're even questioning the man right now. He's earned the credit line. 100%. Is there any that he has made? There's one that comes to my mind, but I'm interested to see what you think about this. Is there any pick, especially like in the top three rounds, that you've questioned? At the time or after the fact? Because after the like fact. Like now, right now. No, not off the top of my head. No, not off the Only top. one I could make the argument for is JMO. I get it though. I do. I, I know. I understand. I understood more then than I do now. Do you know what I, I think what people do is, is they use the term value and more often than not value can be a good thing. And sometimes it can be a bad thing. And I think that's what a lot of people say about JMO right now is, um, okay, well, was he worth that, that pick? And I understand that argument. I, I, I truly do. But at the same time, a, a guy who really started to show everybody just how integral he could be to this offense in, in, a, in a myriad of ways last year. Is it, again, is it first run value? No. But is it, is, it, is it value to the Lions? Absolutely it is. Absolutely it is. You know. I'm not sure you get a player of that caliber later. You know, I, yes, and I'm, I'm also a firm believer that you can get 
wide receivers later. Hi, I'm on Raw. Anybody familiar with that? But um, I get I get that there are going to be people out there that are that are going to point at that and and you know talk about well why did you have to grab him there? He's never going to live up to that you know draft position, especially the way they utilize him with this offense. So um, yeah, I, I can get that. But I mean, it, it, do you want to do over for the pick? You know what? I, and I'm not saying that to you. I'm saying that to yeah. anybody. You know, I don't know. We'll there see. is one other that I actually, and I still hate to this day. What's that? I hated the Hendon Hooker pick. I know it wasn't like it was a high pick or anything, but I just, I hated that pick. I mean, I, I loved him in college. I'm not a fan of quarterbacks coming out of that system, translating to the NFL. Um, in fairness, in fairness to Blake, he isn't just saying this because he told me that back then too. Because uh, I am a huge, huge Hendon Hooker fan. I, I openly admit I would have, I would have voted for him for the Heisman had he not blown his knee out, especially there. Um, Tennessee, whether people want to admit it or not, was kind of a wasteland for a long time. Blake, I always used to joke I was going to write a series of college books called "What Happened." Tennessee, what happened? Washington, what happened? For a while there, Michigan, what happened? Yeah. You know, Colorado, what happened? Now, those ones are a little more drastic, obviously, than the Michigan situation. But, um, you know, you're talking about perennial powers that just kind of fell off the map. And, and, and I think for him to almost single-handedly bring them back on the map um, was pretty big. I understand the argument, and I've heard many people make that argument about him being a quote-unquote system quarterback, but can I fall back on rule number one while we're sitting here on rule two, three, four? If all else fails, go back to Brad Holmes and say, do you trust Brad Holmes? I, and I can't argue that. And I, I mean, I could be totally wrong, and I'll be the first to admit it. As as you like to say, not a lot of other people in this business can do. But I will be the first to admit, if I'm wrong and he ends up being a solid starting quarterback in the NFL, then I'm wrong. I just, I don't, I mean, obviously we haven't even seen him play really yet. Yeah, Tim so. said with Blake, not a fan either. Shout out, Tim. I just, you know what, though? Can I, can I, is that, if if we're left sitting there saying the head scratcher, is taking a flyer on that guy at that point in the draft? No, yeah. You know what I mean? Does that like it, really is that what we're if, if that's what we're left like to complain about? We got it pretty good, right? A hundred percent. Because there's a lot of teams that have a lot bigger questions. You are so in. You no, are, I'm not. This is as in as I've seen you. You are so in. I am in on Brad Holmes, the GM. That I cannot argue at all. He's a, I think he is a fantastic GM and he is very, very good at the draft, which I think is the most important thing a GM does. So that I'm in on. The black jerseys, I'm out on. Yeah. Yeah. That makes two of us. There's, and there's other things I'm out on. But you're in. No. I told right. you I was on a one year deal. I, no, I'm going to put it to you. The playoff team, why are in? Yeah. I know that's a stupid question to ask today before the draft, before free agent signings, before camp, but this is stupid time of year. In a couple mm -hmm. weeks, we are going to do the stupidest thing in the history of mankind, and that's play the schedule game, which wait. is woefully stupid, but I openly admit I, I love playing uh, the, the schedule game. Ben, thank you. Black jerseys are straight trash. Sorry. Not sorry. Um, yeah, I, I, Ben, it is amazing. Like I got a lot of pushback in particular on Twitter from people, um, about that. And it's like, dude, like, it's just my opinion. Like, seriously. But as I said, I mean, the lions are at such a position right now. There's so much good harmony and, uh, cash a with this team. You could, you could put out, 
the ugliest jersey in mankind. And people would go, fly, dope. Oh, that's great. That's a banger. What, whatever you kids say, right? Oh, my gosh, that's the best. That's where we're at right now. So uh, Tim said, I wish I could remember who was available when Hender- Hendon Hooker was taken. Um, I can tell you the ne- the guy that was drafted right after him, I think we would all rather have. Who's that? Tank, Tank Dell on the Houston Texans. Yeah. Tank Dell. Uh, there was some other. Andre Miller, the running back from TCU, they weren't going to take him. Uh, Cedric Tillman went to uh, from Tennessee. He went to the Browns. So there were some good players, but I mean the one literally right afterwards. I definitely must ra- much rather have. That's my opinion. Um, you know what's interesting about this, Blake, is um, you know, different guys in different spots, and you know, I don't know how it would fit here or fit there, but that, I get it. If if we want to have that. If we want to have that conversation, we could have that. Sure, but I mean, I, if, but if value, we have to wait yeah. until we have to wait until after he plays. Like he has to play a snap. I like I understand. Like I'm I'm very early. I'm squatting on this take that I don't like the Hendon Hooker draft. Oh, pick. that's fine. No, that's uh, no. I get it. Oh, look at we we had Mike Fay and Jordan Young in as well. Jordan, I ran into our mutual friend Jason Langwell yesterday. Got to talk to him for just a second. Can't wait for the Rock Mortgage Classic to come up. Hopefully, we can all be out there together. Uh, No, I I left for a minute, but I'm assuming you didn't say the thing while I was gone, did you? I did not. I did not say say the the thing that that Blake is coming to us. Compliments of the Mitch Album Show and Sports Trap on 760 WJR. I did not. Thank you for saying. I I appreciate. No problem. I, I got it out there right now. Um, I blame Hebs man for the technical difficulties. It wasn't me. I swear it was. It wasn't me. You're, wait, well, hey, wait. You're not Hebs man. No. So Stabbing. that's not blaming you. Well, that, yeah. So I don't understand how you got so to that you, point. Do you really want to do this little mock draft thing? Is that is that something? I don't, I, I, my internet's not agreeing with me. So every time I tried to pull it up, uh, yes. literally my thing just like, you know, the little like spinny ball on here. And I don't know if Todd's seeing my texts. I sent him a panic text. Now he's looking at his phone. Now he's, now he's shaking his head. Yeah. Where was Habs man last night? Huh? Well, well I, 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 I wants to know. I well, I told Jordan he wasn't. There's no reason he's going to show up last night. There's no no reason. Yeah, I mean, do you really want to hear him say it? I don't even know how to imitate him. Yeah, do you really want to hear him say congratulations? You don't. You don't want that. Uh, uh, Tim said uh, at least Hooker can take heart. He'll never be compared to Terry Fair. Remember who got taken right after him? Was that Moss? Was that Moss Flynn in that draft? You you can help me out there. Was that was that was that the Randy Moss? I mean, Tim, help me out. I think that was it. Um, but yeah, no, it'll it'll be interesting. I, I, Blake, I, I'm gonna. It was Randy Moss. Can I say this about Randy Moss though? I mean, um, so Blake, you you may or may not know this. I saw him at Marshall, and I think I um, knew that. Yeah. So uh, when I saw him with my own two eyes. I told anybody who would listen, I like I told all my buddies, I was like, this guy is an absolute stud. And I, I think people maybe don't remember the story. Notre Dame, Florida State ended up at Marshall. He and Pennington, perfect fit, uh, whatever. Um, and it was funny because then in the Mid-American Conference Championship, he lit it up. He absolutely lit it up. And so my buddy said after the game, they, they were like, yeah, but who did he do that against? That, that you know, who who's this kid from Toledo? And and I told him, I said, this kid from Toledo is going to be a top three pick, top three rounds, not top three overall. Um, if I'm not mistaken, he ended up going in the third round to the Oakland Raiders. Kid by the name of Clarence Love. He had an NFLer on him, and he abused him. I mean, he did. He abused him, and it. To the surprise of nobody, he went to the NFL and started abusing people. But to see him at that point in time, man, um, what was unbelievable. But as Tim brought up, there were some quote unquote 
character issues. Um, some alleged, some not so alleged that, that precluded Randy Moss from going higher than he eventually did. I think so many people, if you remember, thought he was going to end up going to Dallas. And when it didn't happen, Randy Moss was like, okay, I'm going to make Dallas pay. And boy, did he make Dallas pay. He, he lit him up that Thanksgiving and many times after that as well. So was that the thanks? Like that's the Thanksgiving. Was that the famous Joe Buck call or no? Am I thinking of a different? No, game? no. The Joe talking... Buck call was against Green Bay, right? Yeah. When he whipped his pants down. Yeah. Yeah. That was a few. Yeah. That was a few years later. A few years later. Look at this. Gosh, damn it. I died on it. God, uh, you're going to have to hit. So maybe just to hit. How many teams do we want to mock, Sean? Do we mock them all? And just you do round have, one. Uh, listen, I there's hockey. I can watch the hockey right now. You you guys have a blast with this, okay? This is gonna be so fun. It's gonna go horrible. Yeah. Fast, definitely fast. Okay, go on. Let's do it. Standard. Yep. Enter draft room. Let's go. Start. Hit start right at the top. Todd, this is such good. This is good audio. This Caleb is Williams good. is going number one, right? We agree. Caleb, Caleb Williams going number one. Yep. Caleb Williams. Now, Sean, mm -hmm. if you're the Washington Commanders, are you taking Jaden Daniels? Me? Yes. This is a this is a group thing. I know you just want to yell at me and tell me. No, no, no. I am. Um. Do, so you're are you asking me or, or are you asking me what I think? What do you so, think the Washington Commanders are going to do? Too. I think they are going to take Jane. All right, Jane Daniels. It is. I agree. I, now, can I answer what I? Yes. I would not. Who would you take? JJ McCarthy. Wow. I would. Look at that hat you're wearing and everything, and you say that. No, I would. I would take JJ McCarthy. I we we discussed it. I I think. I think Jaden Daniels is going to get crucified at this level. Uh, Scott won me over. Like, is, you remember when is it because of the weird elbow down? thing he's got going on? And and he he looks for contact. And yeah. I I think he, people talk about. I re, I hate to go back to hockey. With my brain, everything goes back to hockey. Um, Eric Lindros. Okay, that's the way he plays the game. And people would say, well, he's got to avoid contact. You can't. That's the way you play the game. Mm -hmm. You might do it here or there. Jaden Daniels is a guy, if you watch it, and I, gosh, who was I having a conversation with? And they said, well, he'll, he'll get that out of his game. Willie? Willie? Cam Newton didn't. It, 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 it Josh might, Allen hasn't. It might not be as much, but you can't just nix that out of your game, right? I, I think he, I, I, I don't know about that young man's uh, career length. I'll leave it at that. How's that? So New England three. Is this the spot for JJ? Well, I already took JJ. Uh, but, in your, but that's in your personal. Um, I think that they will go with the kid from Carolina. I think that they'll go with Drake. Okay. Drake man. Now, Arizona. Sure. I'm gonna bet. I would be willing to bet money. Oh yeah, sorry to ruin that for everyone. It's not me, dude. I can, I can, I can no, put up that not. video of he and I having a conversation. Three, two Rangers now. Thank you, Jason. All right, go ahead at four. I'm assuming I'm willing to bet that Arizona trades out. That's so what I, I really think is going to happen. If for some reason they don't, it's Marvin Harrison. I think so too. So let's 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 not work under the trade guys. Yeah, we're just doing we're just doing straight mock. I think I think Marvin Harrison one hundred percent absolutely. Now the Chargers. Interesting. This is where it gets really he, really. No, he wants offensive linemen. Mm -hmm. Jim wants offensive linemen. All right. So so who are you going with? Can you scroll down a little bit, Todd? It's all right. It's got to be all. It's got to be all. Yeah. It's the be. only other one that it could be, honestly that would also really fit Jim Harbaugh would be Brock Bowers. But I'll say Joe Alt. I'll go Alt. Okay. Giants. It's got to be the wide receiver. You want to go neighbors? Yeah. Okay. 
Now, Tennessee, Tennessee. Tennessee's in a really interesting position. Tennessee. Tennessee's te- because ten- Tennessee is is kind of in that same spot. Um, you could probably, in my mind, look at them as somebody who might want to deal. Yes. If Minnesota were to make a call, this is my guess. Minnesota calls one of three teams. They call Arizona. They call the Chargers or they call Tennessee. Mm-hmm. If, if they want JJ as badly as some people are suggesting that they want JJ. I think one of those three teams that they call. If, if this board is sitting like this on Thursday, my jaw would drop if Minnesota didn't find a way to m- move into this spot. But since they, they can't, um, you could go offensive line here. You could go tight end here. You could go edge here. You, you could do, you could do numerous things with Tennessee. And since we're not, since we're not doing trades, Mm -hmm. I think I love I'm going to let you pick this one. Brock Bowers. Okay. Because I think what's going to end up happening Atlanta really wants Dallas Turner. That it would be Dallas Turner or that Latu from U- UCLA. Yeah, and we, I think we talked Dallas... about like last month, and like we all were like, okay, why is he being slated late first round and everything? He was going to go earlier than that. So I'll I'll go Dallas Turner. I'm with you there. Dallas Turner. Yep. Um, Chicago's going to get another weapon. You know that. Yeah, and it's going to be Roma Dunze, the best receiver in the draft. Okay, I'm with you. Oh, are they going to be happy as pig and crap? Mm-hmm. Now the Jets, the Jets obviously don't need a QB. Can you scroll down a little bit? I just need a name refresher. You already took Brock Bowers, right? Yes. Okay. And I, I think they would love him in this spot. Brian Thomas would also be a great player in this spot. Um, but I feel like they have to go O line. Can you, can you click? Uh, yeah, Jeez, oh, Pete. But that would be a huge reach at that point, wouldn't it? Yeah, if, if you pay attention to value, you're, you're over, old, old OT, you, not in, interior. Yeah, yeah. If, well, Shanu. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, I'm in. Shanu. Yeah. Yep. You know they have to do a better job of the protecting their quarterbacks. I mean, that was something we all saw on that show last. Yes. Year. Why can't I think 100%. of the name of the show? Hard knocks. Thank you. Um, JJ's going to Minnesota. Yeah, I think he's going to Minnesota. They're going to trade up for him. But they would going be to happy as a pig in crap if they got him at that point in time. Let, yep. Make no mistake about that. Uh, the Denver Broncos, they really could use a quarterback. They could use, a I think, they could I use think, a lot. Let's be honest. Dave I'm going to go edge here. I'm going to go edge here. I'm going to, I'm I, like, let me pick. I'm, I'm going to go with uh, the kid from UCLA. I was going to say Bo Nix just to troll Dave Rieger. No. No. But yeah, it's, I agree with you. Right. So Vegas well, is. This is awful, by the way. I yeah, just, no, I, wanna, when I knew it would be. It's awful. So is go there a way to sim? Auto, yeah, hit the auto draft button until I told we get you to the Lions pick. I told Click you. onto the Lions pick. Oh, you were the one that needs to. No, 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 no. I just wanted to do the top 10. Why are you yelling at me? Don't do this. You wanted to do the top 10, so we did a dozen. <laughs> well, it's a baker's dozen. Baker's dozen. Well, you may as well go to 13 now, jackass. There you go. Todd's having technical. We're just, we're, Jesus, we're just going through it. Right Jesus said, worst trade, Philly for Lindros, Mini for Herschel Walker. The Herschel Walker deal by, like, a gazillion balls. Just awful. I mean... Everything that Dallas got from that is insane. And don't get me wrong. Obviously, Nordique slash Avalanche got ended up getting a huge deal. But you can say for a little while, Eric Lindros was one of the best players in the league. And in my humble opinion, Jason, I think you're old enough to remember this. I thought the strike shortened season, he was the best player in the league. Herschel Walker was never at that from that point on the best player in the league couldn't even you couldn't even come close to making an argument for it you know what i mean um 
Eric, obviously, I mean, it, he wasn't going to last. He can't, even as big and strong as Eric was, and, and if you haven't seen Eric Lindros up close and personal, the, the guy was built like a tank. I mean, seriously, he was built like a tank. You can't. Something's going to give, man. When you're throwing that many hits and you're getting hit that many times, something something is definitely going to give. And it was, unfortunately, Eric Lindros' brain that that gave. And, I mean, that's I'm not being funny when I say that. There's nothing funny about that. All right, Todd, this, Todd this is what we're going to do. Hit restart. Oh, my gosh. You're still doing and this. And just hit Detroit. And then now. You're still doing this. Just because it irritates you at this point. Mm. And I like it. Hit start. Ooh, look at it. It's so fast now. You know what? While while you're doing that, can I can I give you Oh, we have a trade offer. Let's see, that's the one that I use. I what all right, let's see. What's the what's the offer? Uh we got the fifth round pick. Of this year, 2025 second round pick, 2025 third round pick. No. Reject. No. A year um, or two ago, I think about that. Um, Not now. The window is open now. I don't give a crap about your 2025 and 2026. Yes. Not at all. All right. So this is what we got at pick 29. All right. This is what we got available. And. Mikey Sanders still still sitting there, but I re- you know I was listening to uh, Todd McShay talk about Nate Wiggins last night mm-hmm. and his versatility, and I know he's like the highest rated guy that's like on this board right now, but that guy's good man, and I know he's undersized. I really would like that in this spot. Um, you could all you could always go offensive lineman just to fit what Dan Campbell oh, wants to okay. do. Let, let's get let let's get Q. What, what about a guy like Mitchell? I mean, they they need another wide receiver. Let's be honest. People would lose or their lad. What about let's, bad lad? Blake, this is what I'm talking. People would lose their mind if they did that. Mm-hmm. And 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 again, I, I like. I'm start getting mad. Peace and Zen. It doesn't matter if you need if you need a wide receiver and you need a cornerback and and you need a butt and you need an edge. Like how people get themselves so wrapped up and work themselves up to a lather. Oh, what is he doing? He took a wide receiver in round one where we don't need just a cornerback. We need multiple cornerbacks. And and that's where I do my sarcastic. I'm not sure you know this, but there are seven rounds. And the Lions have multiple picks. I why people do that every year, it blows my mind. Now if there's a guy that you really liked there, you know, as you're breaking down the film, Ron Jaworski, if there's a guy that you really liked there, okay, then I, I guess you have a little validity. But how often do you hear people like talk in the simplest form of going, does he even care about Edge? Do, does he realize you have to get after the quarterback? It's like, dude, you can get another guy in the second or third round that maybe you have a circle on. That you and your your scouting staff is saying, why are people sleeping on this guy? So in the meantime, why don't we grab uh, Mitchell or whomever it may be? It, it's one of the most amazing things. I don't know. So after all of that being said, who do you want to pick? I'll let you do it. Go ahead. No, go ahead, princess. Yeah, it'd be Nate Wiggins. It's your bit. Go ahead. Put your little crown Nate on. Nate Wiggins. I'll stand on the table. I won't argue. I think he's really good, man. I won't argue with that. There you go. I wouldn't Safe. Argue. A plus. I'm the best. Um, Ray said, if not for the Lindos trade, does Quebec move to Colorado and win cups? Getting Forsberg was key to the God, I'm taking this off the screen. Uh, Ray, you know as well as I do, they were gone. They were they were gone. They were leaving Quebec. That was no ifs, ands, or buts. They were they were gone. Um I think people forget 
So they had the really good team in 93 that got upset in the first round of the Habs, and they kind of fell apart in 94. And then they had a really good team in 95. Don't forget, they, they finished first, if I'm not mistaken, and then got upset in the first round on a very controversial no call. Um, they were gone. Didn't matter. Like they were, they short of them winning the Stanley Cup in '95, which wasn't going to happen. Uh, they were gone. That was they were they were going to Colorado. That's just the way it is. Um, could you see teams trade up with the Detroit to take Penix or Knicks? Yes, hundred percent. Yes, yeah, and yeah. probably would overpay to do it. But I think Penix will go before the before twenty nine. I know uh, you are a Michigan boy. If you didn't know this, our buddy Ben Zalegi, of course, uh, the voice of the Motor City Rockers. Congratulations to the Rockers. Go out and check them out this week. Got it done in the first round. He's a big Michigan fan as well. Smart Zach man. Zinter. I saw the tape. We all saw the tape, right? Um, what are your thoughts on Zach Zinter? Uh, once he's healthy, I think he's going to be... An incredible interior lineman in the NFL. I mean, obviously, like I have a homer, but dude, he is so tough and so gritty. And it, you know, Harbaugh is going to do everything in in his power to somehow get him in like the second or third round. Yeah, Ben, as Ben pointed out, fan and grad. I'm not a grad, Ben. So you got that on me. I'm just a fan. All right. All right, so do you want to do round pick a round two now with the Lions? Or you no, gonna, I'm over it. With this exercise, yes, yes. Thanks, Ben. I appreciate <laughs> that. You still like it. Um. So yeah, we'll we'll wait and see. But no, Blake. So I hope people can understand even doing that exercise. Well, we we're gonna do two and three on Thursday at. That's. Is that gonna, that's going to be after 8 o'clock when, when I'm in my car heading the other way. Speaking of batch, or, did you like that, Blake? No, that was kind of my plan. Well, I'm proud of you. Good job. So you can put that cute little thing up. Hey, there it is. Lots of stuff going on uh, this weekend at Batch Brewing Company. Uh, tomorrow night, NFL Trivia with Quizzo. Thursday, we are going to be hanging out there. I'm going to be there at 5.30. We're going to hit the air approximately 6.30. We're going until 8 o'clock Friday, Michigan homecoming tailgate. I know our mutual friend uh, Lomas Brown is going to be hanging out there as well. And round two, three, watch party. Uh, it, it's happening the next few days at Batch Brewing Company. I'm telling you, if you haven't seen their menu yet, it's a tremendous menu, and if you are a fan of smokers, get down there because it's wafing throughout the air. Chicken, jerk, sausage. Just I, say it. Keep repeating it to yourself. It is outstanding. But uh, join us, please. 1400 Porter Street in Corktown, uh, batchbrewingcompany.com. And, uh, again, if you don't want to go down all the way down to where the festivities are happening. Yeah. Come a few miles west, just off of Michigan Avenue down in beautiful Corktown. We'd love to see you out there. Great Blake's going to be hanging out. Uh, Todd's going to be hanging out. Uh, a few of the usual suspects hanging out. We'd love to see you there as well. And I say this again, uh, do us a favor and support the people that are supporting us. And certainly Batch is one of those people that is supporting us. Uh, Raymond said all the talk of JJ going in the top five, is it more based on potential more than his stats at Michigan? Have you seen a guy get so much hype for being a so-called system guy? I'm going to answer that. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to let, let the non Michigan fan. I love the kid. I love the kid. I, I I've seen him make throws that other quarterbacks don't make. I've seen him do it constantly. You know what? I, the, the, Throw on the run while he's rolling out the dart down the sideline. That kid, that is an NFL throw. The first time I saw him do it a couple of years ago, I said, okay, this kid has it. I thought that he was, I'm going to be point blank honest with you, okay? I thought that he was the next in line of the much ballyhooed Michigan quarterback, where now that you guys have won, a couple Big Ten titles and a national championship, perhaps 
you're big enough to admit it now. You know, how many times did we hear about this name or that name or this name or that name? Um, this guy's the best. That guy's the best. I, I, I had an argument a couple of years ago with a guy that told me uh, that one of your quarterbacks, I mean, he went like total Beano Cook on me. And, and Blake, I think you know who I'm talking about, was not going to win one, but was probably going to win two Heisman trophies. I mean, you guys know what I'm Ooh. talking about. Come on, I'll, I'll give you a guess. Um, but you, you guys, you guys know what I'm talking about. This is this is the kind of stuff that drives me out, that that drove me out of my mind. JJ's the real deal. He's a real deal. I, I have no problem saying it. I don't care what his numbers were. I don't care that you can throw system quarterback out there. All that stuff. There is a reason that going back three months ago. J.J. McCarthy, the question was, and Blake, you and I talked about it in our very first show. The question was, will J.J. McCarthy sneak into the first round? We read a story, and Blake and I both laughed at it. Laughed at it. Yes, he's going to be a first-round pick. Yes, yes, yes. He's going to be a top-ten pick. I said it then, I say it now. He's going to be, he's going to be a top-ten pick. Um, okay. NFL okay, so. teams have seen what he can do, and they love what he could do um, period end of story so yes. that's that's it did i cover all the bases as a non uh michigan fan yes 100 percent. i and i can't disagree or argue with that what i have did, a question yeah because this is like uh, my brain is just toasted right now uh who is the five-star qb from de la salle that went to Sugar michigan Shane morris that's the name remember the hype behind him um that was you know um, that was an incredible time in michigan football it it, it really was whether people want to admit it or not um shea was like that too i mean joe milton was bad but people people were going crazy about shea i didn't know anything about I think, all, all that you know i think shea was shea for like that time frame of michigan football was not as bad as like no, see it looking no, back on no, it. no, no, like no, no. He no, was no. the best probably before JJ. Agreed. Uh, but whether you guys want to admit it or not, and it's a lot easier to admit it now that you've won multiple Big Tens and a national championship. I've heard this crap for years. I mean, I've, I mean, you're, you're talking about a string of 15. I had people, I'm not even going to say his name because it's just me. That kid was put in a spot. He should have never been in Nick Sheridan. I, I had people oh. talking that poor kid up. And I mean, it, it didn't take a hey, rocket. Force, yeah. uh, you, forces of nature. Remember? <laughs> did I ever tell I, you I, I met him? Did you really? Yeah. And I, listen, I like Devin Gardner as a human being. I think he does a great job. I, I know I've said this before. I was terrified of Devin Gardner when I first saw him play. And then I realized Michigan's offensive line is an absolute joke. And that, that poor man got killed. Yep. I mean, that offensive line ruined any he hope of him going to the next level. Yep. I mean, they, they killed him. They killed him. So, yeah, so when I met, I met Tate Force, I met him. Like, I don't know if Michigan still does this. This is... I was in high school and first like before the spring game, like the week before they would do like you could meet all the players and like get their autographs and stuff. And it was at Michigan stadium mm -hmm. and I met him and I might, and like, I was like 15, 16 years old and I'm not kidding. When I tell you, he might've been one of the dumbest human beings I've ever met in my life. I've heard that. Like just a total airhead. The lights were on. No one was home, man. I, I've asked I was like, ooh. Uh, Jason said Chris Carlin from the ESPN mothership absolutely disagrees with every one of your points. I who's that? Who am I? Am I missing uh, something? Jason, explain. I I missed that no. reference. Uh, Tim said then there was him. Which him? Denard. He's. I I guarantee you he's talking about Denard. I, I have a very special place in my heart for tonight. Okay, you know what? So I, I said this then, and I wonder how many of you would be willing to admit this now. Okay. All right. 
Denard came at a time where you guys needed something to cheer for. And he gave you something to cheer for, right? Yep. You guys needed something. Can you please admit what the rest of us knew? And that guy wasn't going to do anything against a defense worth a damn. I mean, it was his whole career. It's not like it was here or there. That guy could not get it done in the quote unquote big game and against defense. That was really, really good. You know? Good I, loved, I I loved watching him play. Kirk said Devin Gardner was a beast in high school. Yeah, boy, who can forget that night? I remember getting a uh gosh, was it a phone call? Who did I hear from? That that Urban Meyer actually made like a last minute plea and flew up here on a Friday night to see Devin Gardner play to try to get Devin to go down to Florida. And that was like, ooh, Urban Meyer's coming. You know what I mean? So that's the, that's the, uh, oh, he's the announcer for Rutgers football on his radio show. He said JJ is a system quarterback. Come on. I don't value the opinions of Rutgers. I have always, always taken pride in this. I think whether this is your job or not, should be inconsequential, but especially if it's your job, you have to separate your fandom from reality. You just yeah. do. Yeah. This, I, I used to get so mad at so many Michigan fans for trying to detract from what Michigan State was doing in that D'Antonio era. It was like, stop it. Like, it, this is silly. Just, just give them their credit. I know it hurts you. I know their little brother. All I, like, just, just give credit. And that's why, like, if the other guy does it, you know what you do? You give a tip of the cap. Prop, man. The biggest thing, I, the biggest prop I can give that era is I hated Mark D'Antonio. Sure. I hated him. Right. And that's, that, the, and, and he loves that. Absolutely. Just like Michigan State fans hated Jim Harbaugh. And they should. I told you this. And I had a chance to talk to Coach Harbaugh a few times. I I didn't hate the guy. No, no, I, I, no, I probably but you can have. but you can see things from like outside of your Michigan State fandom. You don't you don't see everything you through know what? I, I, green I, and I white hated, lenses. I hated the Harbaugh's gonna take over crap. Like year one, whether people want to admit it or not, I remember talking to somebody in the Detroit media and they said well, uh, he's probably just going to win the Big Ten in year one, but um, year two for sure, uh, Natty. Oh, okay, maybe maybe I'm being a little too slappy. Year three, and I'm going, right? Well, okay, so year two was they were in position, right? Was it year two or year three? Yeah, yeah, JT was short, and then they got stomped in the, in the bowl. Well, not stomp, but... JT was short. That's a fact. Change my mind. You can't. I just, just like look, the trade... Look, this, you this people game... have doctored the film so many times, I, I don't even know if there's real film that exists out there. Okay. Now, okay. let me ask one you... One time, I had... J, like, JT was so short, he was in Tennessee. That's wrong. Well, what you people do to that film... Was the Trey Burke block, block clean? Yes. Okay. Uh, you know what? We found a happy medium. Yes. That was the cleanest block ever. If you're ready to ch take charge of your financial future, I think it's high time that you call our friends, the Hanson Brothers, at Wealth Advantage Group. I said this earlier. Hey, do yourself a favor. Give our friends a call. Do it for us. Do it for you. Because these guys are located in historic downtown, downtown Norville. And they understand that your financial goals are as unique as you are. That's why they offer personalized expert guidance to help you navigate the complexities of financial planning. Now, whether you're saving for retirement, getting ready to sell your company, or already in retirement, they can help guide you through every step of your financial journey. They work with clients throughout all stages of life. They have clients in over 20 states, including you're listening to a guy right now. The investment world is a complex one. So if you're ready to start taking 
your finances more seriously, I think it's time to work with the experts. Reach out to my friends at the Wealth Advantage Group at 248-773-8574 or visit their website at www.thewealthadv.com. Appreciate everything that uh, my buddies Jeff and Mike do. Uh, Thanks for being a part of this. And as I said, uh, we had some people that reached out to Legacy. Uh, They find find out what we've been talking about. You have an opportunity to reach out to my friends at Wealth Advantage Group, and they can help you out as well. Um, Raymond said, if this was Madden, would Harbaugh trade Herbert for a nice package and take JJ at five? Could you imagine that? Did you honestly? Him? Would I put it past Jim Harbaugh though? He no. did have a strong, strong love for JJ. Yeah, but you Could already you have. Imagine. Him. I want you to think about this. Could you imagine? Could you imagine what kind of package you might get for Herbert too? That would be probably two could, first, two seconds. That could be monstrous. Yeah, but do you want to hand? a team that feels like they aren't that far away. Do you want to hand the reins over right now to a rookie? Aren't they further away though than I personally, I like don't the think Keenan so. and Allen trade made it feel like, I think they needed a colonic. I really do. I, I think they needed to drink. What's that barium or whatever. And they needed to just get a whole bunch of shit out. Yeah. I really do. And I think, I think Jim, Jim Harbaugh is kind of that high powered colonic. Because they got rid of Eckler, too, right? Where's Eckler at now? Oh, no. You don't want to get rid of a running back. Yeah, but still. Not to, no, anything but a running back. I get your point, but yeah. yeah but they got rid of Keenan Allen. I, they think got rid of got a, I think they've got a lot of nice pieces there. I do. I think they've got a lot of... I, I think they... Uh, I am a high-powered colonic expert. There's no doubt about that. You know what we should do over the summer? What's that? Is uh, New Faces, New Places. You just go through where free eight. Yeah. Just well, where we're guys are now. About college football. Who's kidding who? That's a good idea. No, we well, can what, do it like I are gonna be here with like our shirts off and our pants off and uh all of that. Come here. You want to show everybody? We can do it like in oh. June. Come here, conehead. <laughs> I almost hung them. Conehead came running over and he got he got the uh he got the cord wrapped around him. Uh, we should do that in like June. We'll just okay. do like new faces, okay. new places. We can you do know? That. Yeah. I know Ben will join us on that. I, there's so many people. This is, I'm going to say this again. I, I think college football is a hell of a m- lot more popular around here than people give it credit for. I understand this is Lions Town. I, I get it. 100%. I think if you argue otherwise, college football is a close number two. It, mm-hmm. it is. I mean, everybody loves their college football around here. And when I was younger, I used to get pissed off. I was that kid. And you can ask my friends, like you can ask Mike. I was that guy that was, was watching sec on, on Saturday afternoons. And people go, why are you watching that? And I would say they're better. It's more fun. Right. I think with the proliferation of college football's popularity, I, I think more people around here are more educated. It always used to be what's Michigan doing? What's Michigan State doing? What's Ohio State doing? I think people have left their backyards and look beyond the fence to see what else is going on in college football. And that has me so excited. That has me so excited that like now before you know, before I'm telling you, when I was doing radio shows 10, 15 years ago, I'm not trying to sound like a snob. You felt like you were talking over a majority of the people's heads out there, you know? Mm-hmm. Huh? What? Yeah, I mean, honestly, because it was it was all about what was happening in the Big Ten. Yeah. That was back when people were still arguing with me that the Big Ten is the best conference. Well, I mean, this year it is. National Championship. Who has the Maddie? Come on. They have the best team. If there's one human being out there that thinks that the Big Ten is better than no, the I, I, okay. In I, all seriousness, I know you're having fun. With you it. know, uh, we we are. If there's one thing that we agree on more than anything else in this whole world, this whole universe, universe, it is college football. Like we're on the same page. 
same wavelength, everything. I was the same way. I grew up watching Uncle Vern at 3.30 on CBS. Oh, good. And it was, I, I would not watch Big Ten games when I was in, like, my early years of high school or college. I would not watch Big Ten games to watch the SEC game of the week on, on CBS. And so, now it's not even on CBS anymore. It makes me sad because I love that music. <laughs> now it's Big Ten music. Now we get to claim it. So weird. Uh, all right, one more read before we get out of here. Boy, we went long tonight. That's fine. It's because your mock draft idea was a disaster. You know, I can leave at any point. Uh, but leave after I tell you about our preferred real estate agent. When it's time to buy, sell, both, you need to contact the right agent. I got one for you. That young lady right there, Lindsay Broadwell. Your house is probably the biggest investment you'll ever make, and that's why you need a pro. Lindsay grew up on the mean streets of Northville and has expanded her team all over Southeast Michigan. She's an expert in all facets of the business, and when it's time for you to move, our friend Lindsay and her team will make sure you get the most out of your house and everything goes smoothly when finding your new home. Buyer, seller, first-time buyers, it doesn't matter. You need to contact a pro. You need to contact Lindsay at broadwellhomes.com. She will help you with everything from start to close. Licensed realtor at Real Broker LLC. Start your search today at broadwellhomes.com. We're going to welcome our new sponsor to the show. I think on Thursday, uh, it is the Cone of Shame. Uh, Cole is going to be doing some reads uh, for wearing cones. Hi, I'm Cole. And when I get my balls chopped off, I get Blake's Cone. That's right. Blake's Cannot. cones protect me from licking the wound on my healing testicles. Thanks, man. It's the truth. Can we? Can I respond to some comments that? Well, we were nerding out about college football. Some people were talking in the chat, and uh, it was actually Raymond who commented like three times. Uh, all the prospects prospects taken in the first round, Brock Bowers will be the best of them. And teams will regret passing on him, mark it down. And then he also said Brower, Bowers is a Gronk Kelsey combo with wide receiver speed. I'm not huge. Like, I think Brock Bowers is really good. His blocking is nowhere near the level of either of those guys. I um I, I reserve the right to worry too. I do. When you have that type of injury, I, I reserve the right right to worry. Yeah. And I understand that it's not the way it used to be and guys can get fixed and everything, but Maybe it's my age. I still worry about it. You know, Tim, I'm going to, I'm going to bring this up. I'm so glad that you brought this up because we have had this conversation so many times and God love you. I mean that you have taken my point so far out of context. It's not, it's, it's not even funny. So I'm going to hopefully Is settle this it. about right. Larkin again? No. So about eight years ago. No, I think it was nine years ago. Okay. Blake, and you probably know this, all right? There were many in the Michigan fan base who refused to give Michigan State credit. Wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. It hurt too much. Yeah. Their world was turned upside down, all of that. And one of the most unbelievably dumb things that I saw, okay, is there were people out there, and I'm not going to mention any names, that were trying to say winning the conference isn't a big deal. And I, I, it couldn't be. Can you text me the names so that any, I can say it, No, it couldn't be any more dumb. Like, yeah, that. Oh. It, it just couldn't be. And I would always respond with, Bo Schembechler is rolling over in his grave right now. Jim Harbaugh's hero, by the way. Bo Schembechler is rolling over in his grave right now. To which people would say, well, Bo Schembechler never won anything. And I'd say, true, but it starts with your conference. It starts with 100%. your conference. 100%. And I'm not joking. You could go back. If I was bored, I found some of the old comments. And I, I'm not one of those guys, this guy said this, this guy said that. Many of you were privy to some of these Facebook arguments over, over the years. And I would always say it starts in your conference. And then do you know what always 
one or two wiseacres would come out and go, well, not necessarily. You don't necessarily have to win your conference. Look at Alabama. And I'd go, oh, are we now comparing Michigan to Alabama? Is that what we're, that's adorable. That's adorable. You, you got to find a better spin zone. They didn't have, they didn't have that credit line. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what was amazing to me is when Michigan finally won the big 10 in t- 2021, how many of these same people were celebrating the big 10 title? And I said, tip a cap. I don't, I don't have anything against you. I'm, I'm, can you admit that you were that guy years ago? And many people can't do that. So my argument with you, Tim, and many other people out there was never, ever, ever, ever Jim Harbaugh versus Bo Schembeck. It was to the idiots, and I'm not taking that back, the idiots that tried to act like winning the Big Ten wasn't a big deal. You're dumb. Really, I mean, that, I, I, I have no other way to say it. You're dumb. And if Jim Harbaugh was here right now, Jim Harbaugh would probably laugh and then he'd go, wow, they are dumb. I, I mean, what do, how else do you want me to say that? They're just, I mean, nothing. There's no other way to say that ever. Never. Tim said, I was you know what? the level of talent in the Big Ten along the number of teams. I, mean, I don't think that comes into play you have to win your conference period everything starts there everything Mm -hmm. that you want to do starts with winning your conference you know what stinks about this new playoff what's that that fact that what you just said isn't true anymore i agree i agree that's the only bad thing i I mean obviously winning winning the big ten will still be important and Schools will still take pride in that and everything. I don't think that that's going to change, especially because it's going to get you a buy, but it doesn't mean nearly as much. But if you listen, Tim, to answer your question, I I think, you know, the one thing that you have to give Bo Schembechler credit for is Jim Harbaugh's Michigan doesn't happen without Bo Schembechler. Doesn't. And if you don't believe me, you could ask Jim Harbaugh that. I would bet my life, my life, that Jim Harbaugh would be the first thing to say that. He resurrected something that was flat out dead. And don't sit there and tell me that Michigan was dead when Jim Harbaugh took over. Don't don't say that. They weren't dead. Low spot? Yeah. No doubt about it. I, I think they were all talked out, quite frankly. But they weren't quote unquote dead. Bo built a program. Uh, if you if you want to measure things by natties, well, advantage Harbaugh, period. I mean, what what can you say? 2021, 2022, 2023, Big Ten champions and a national championship. End. That's it. And joy and happiness on this young man's face. Can I can I also say what is say whatever you want. You know, what is fascinating to me is a lot of the same Michigan fans that are now talking about how bad Michigan was under Brady Hoke literally were whipping off batches until that last year over Brady Hoke. Am I am I allowed to say that? Yeah. And I'm not I'm not saying that about you, Tim, but there were, I mean, there were there were people that were just that now I hear this this revisionist history about how bad the Brady Hoke era was, and I was like, wait a second, wait, what time out, time out. When I had the audacity to say that back in 13 and 14, I was a hater and a Sparty and all of that bull crap. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I mean, to me, I, I, this is why I always say, like the word hater, Blake, it always makes me laugh. It always makes me laugh. This, this is really easy, this job. Don't tell anybody. You want to know the secret? If a team's playing very well, And if a team's not playing well, say they're not playing well. I, right? Can I, can I spin this on to you, though? You can do whatever you want. Stop coming. I need a dip. Um. Well, 100%. I mean, it was the same thing. After 21, oh, talk coming. Oh, yeah, how'd that work out? Um. It, 
Here's a big difference, though. This is what I would say. I think that was a year of slappiness. Whether you guys want to admit it or not, you you had the market cornered on slappiness for over a decade. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not. I can't argue I, that whatsoever. I can't tell you how many times. And I, but also you're saying you guys, I am not that mission. How many people, I wish, I wish I could find like a poll. I mean, how many people legitimately want to get rid of Harbaugh after 2020? Because oh, there I, were a lot. For a fact, there was there a, lot a lot of people. people. I was not in that camp. I, right, I will so way too long, but listen, can I bring, no, one we more? went college football nerd. This is no section. We I, need the I, alert. I, no. Can I bring one more thing up about the new yeah, playoff? And this is a big concern of mine and it shouldn't be, but it is. Okay. And I was just complaining about exception to the rule. So many people said, well, you don't have to win your conference. And I was like, stop it. The, 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 the rarities are this small. And I'm openly admitting that the rarity is this small. But what if we see a Wisconsin 2012? What if, what if some shit team from the other side gets the championship game and pulls something like that? That Wisconsin team was eight and five, for goodness sake. You know, and, and, and they. Yeah, but now there isn't that, the other side. I, no... I know, but, but you know what I'm saying? What, what, if, what, if, there, what if there's a three loss team? Like really? Are we are we really going to say that? Yay, yay! Let's put them in the national championship hunt. I, okay, but three loss teams from the SEC and the Big Ten in this SEC and Big Ten will be getting in, whether they win their league or not. So I think so too. I think because so. the ACC and the Big Twelve are I don't, just no second fiddle. I just I I I I don't like the automatic bit. I don't. I'm, I'm I, just because of that rarity. No, I get what you're saying. Yes, you know, well, I am especially even because they're going to get a buy. Even if there's this much of a chance, I think that's too much of a chance. Does that no, make I'm, sense? I'm not disagreeing. Yeah. Tim I, said if people get their way, uh, no national title. Um, yeah, the people that wanted Harbaugh gone. It was amazing. I, I would say it was 50 50. What, what would you say it was? 70 30? 70 30? What was. That wanted Harbaugh gone after the COVID year, Seven, 70 that wanted him to stay, 30 that wanted him gone. Is that fair? Yeah, I would even maybe go 60, 40. Okay. There was yeah. a lot of people that wanted him. There really was. There really was. Yeah. See, look at all these comments. Yeah, See, people said, like when we yeah. call college football nerd. Do it for, we could do 24 hours of college football nerd. Wait until the fall, people. Uh, just Mario wait. said, how long until we just have two super conferences with 24 teams each? You know what, my friend? You bring up something that is near and dear to my heart. The D2 playoffs work. They work, they work, they work. And the NC2A has to drop this BS about it's not in the best interest of the student athlete. They have fun. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, is the D1 athlete more important than the D2 athlete? Because the D2 playoffs are money. They're absolutely money. And you know what? You settle things on the field. And if you just get into the playoff, you got a chance. Blake, I had a front row seat to Wayne State literally being the last team to get in in 2011. And they went on the road and they won in St. Cloud, and they went on the road, and they won in Nebraska Kearney, and they went on the road, and they won at Minnesota Duluth, and they went on the road and beat the unbeaten, nobody's going to beat Winston-Salem in their barn. Give them a chance, even if it's on the road, to show that they belong. And, you know, obviously it fell just short. They lost to Pittsburgh State in the championship. But the D2 playoffs are money, and, and it is 24 teams. Let's go. And you know what? You are playing games on site. You are hosting games. I absolutely positively win, 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 win. Did win. you see that thing that came out a couple of weeks ago that was literally proposed? What's that? It was the uh, it was the Super League and the bottom. There was like tiers. It was mm -hmm. like all these tiers, and there was a bottom tier that had relegation. And it was literally proposed in like. Are you going to like like out of the Power Five? Is that is that how it works? No, or so like there were D two. All the all the leagues were. I believe it was ten team leagues. So it went back to ten team leagues. There was like ten ten team leagues, and the the last one 
could be like teams from like what was, is the group of five now could play their way into it. I'll have to send you the article. Yeah. It's fascinating. Jason, damn you, Spartan Shauna, for being fair. This is college football, damn it. That's oh, well. Dude, it's my, like, honestly, thank you. Uh, I, I, I would hope that everybody that knows me, that I, I don't hide who I'm a fan of, go green. But you, you got a job to do. Be fair. And even, you know, I, I always say this all the time. Even if, if this wasn't my job, I don't know. I'd like to live in reality. And this is why we get along. Does, I, like, did, uh, you know what I mean, Blake? I, I really, yeah. I like to, I like, sometimes you, you, to your point, Blake, sometimes you have to go, Psst. Sean, what's up, Blake? This Tucker. I don't know about this guy. Sometimes you like, you, you have to like, you know, you, oh, yeah. thank you. I did it to the, the John L. Smith fans and you know who you are. I did it to, I was done with John L. long before his last year, long before his last year. And they didn't want to listen, you know, and they had that crazy comeback against Northwestern. What do you got to say? No, I'm going, yippee, they beat Northwestern. We, you know what I mean? And it, like, that's, that's the kind of crap that drives me out of my mind. Raymond's coming in with great questions. Raymond's, Raymond, great Raymond's crushing it. Uh, Oregon is going to come in and be. So I can go look at, so I can go look at scores right now. Oregon is going to come into the big 10 and be very, their coach recruits at a very, very high level came from Georgia. That that team is loaded with talent. Offensive and defensive line is great. I'm very excited to see Oregon play Big Ten games. They're going to fit like a glove in this conference. Um, and could win it in year one, legitimately. So, so um, to you, I will piggyback on your your point. Um, you better have your house in order. You better because this this is a new Big Ten. You are going to get run in this conference if you don't have your house in order. Mm -hmm. You 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 are going to get run, and that's why I'm glad that Michigan State went out and got a guy like Jonathan Smith. Um, I and I'm not writing any checks for this year, okay? But this is a guy that gets it. This is a guy that knows what it's like to to compete, you know, with big boys in the conference and hold his own against the big boys. And uh, from the first time that we talked to him, Blake, uh, I remember even you looked at me and you were like, I like this guy and I like this hire. Um, I'm mm -hmm. not writing any checks, I, but this conference is going to be really tough. Yep. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be really tough. It is. I, but I, I think Oregon is in a great spot to compete for it. I really do. Yeah. I think the other three that are coming in are in nearly the same position. I think Oregon's built. Like a Big Ten team. I agree with you, but I don't think Washington's too far. UCLA. UCLA they lost a lot. I understand from, that, but yeah. they, they also have had in a pipeline for a little bit now out in Washington. And I understand they made a coaching change, but I think they've had a pipeline. UCLA and USC have kind of been wandering the wilderness forever. I've I've openly, I, I told you, every year I love to play the who's the most overrated team in the AP Top 25. I don't even have to look. I'll go USC. I won. I mean, every year it seems that way, man. Yeah. You always like that's always this is a bit, you know. Lincoln Riley did not sign up for this USC either. No, he's not ready for Big Ten football. Nope, at all. All right, we got to get out of here. Yeah, God, real quick, one more why? thing. Will you stop complaining? We're talking college football. Oh, I gotta go watch hockey. <laughs> um. If everyone out there watching could please subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, our goal is 500 subscribers. We are we are working on it. We're would you we're, please seriously subscribe no. if you guys like like right now we actually have 269 in there. If you guys like 269 of you like right now, all of you guys, that would be cool. That helps us out. And please support those who support us. Thank you to the guys that already reached out to our sponsors. But um, yeah, this this is fun. We're getting a lot of views. It's it's cool. It's cool. Yes. And go like and follow what the puck so that we can go live on that page again. Ben just said exactly where I want to go run right now. Uh, side note: Tampa, Florida is a gem, absolute gem. That's where I want to go. Uh, Kirk said, "Blake, I'm full." Blake, did you like my food last night? 
I'm going to go eat more of it, actually. But no, it sucked. Per usual. That was, I actually caught you, you you rat. You were sitting there, you were sitting there at the table. I heard what you said. Don't try son. This brisket and corned beef's really good. Oh, yeah. Because I didn't wait for you to walk by on purpose to say that. I know. That was a good bit by me. It was. All right, go watch hockey, you crybaby. See you guys uh, tomorrow. What the puck? Uh, We are just going to have one guest. Uh, The other guy, unfortunately, couldn't join us, so we're going to have one guest. Lots of playoff hockey to talk about. I want to talk with you guys tomorrow as well. And then Thursday, uh, hey, if you don't have anything to do, come join us out at at, uh, Batch. We'd love to see you out at Batch. All right? So what else do they have to do, Blake? They have to subscribe to the YouTube channel and go like the Facebook page for What the Puck. And Sean's going to tweet out both of these things after the show tonight and make a Facebook post about them to remind everyone to do that. Do I do it tonight or do I do it tomorrow? You're going to do that tonight and you're going to post this podcast tomorrow. All right. Tim, always a pleasure. All you guys, always a pleasure. Tell your friends about us. Please like. um, You want to advertise with us. We're having fun. This is growing. We have the numbers to prove it. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Off the Air with Sean Belegian. Featuring Sean Belegian and Blake Matrizak. Produced by Todd Losey and Blake Matrizak. Executive produced by Sean Belegian and Todd Losey. Theme song, incidental music, and related sound effects are from Play It Loud by Jam Studio. Engineering, mixing, and graphic design support provided by the unsyndicated podcast team. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Off the Air with Sean Belegian on all your favorite channels. While you're there, be sure to rate and review the podcast. Got something to say to Sean? Call the unsyndicated hotline at 248-237-3257.